All right, folks, welcome back. This is our Tuesday commentary for the ICT Mentorship, November 16th, 2021. So here we have it again. Um, IPTA delivered perfectly up to our weekly imbalance. Just poked its head above, a little bit above that. Completely filled in the imbalance over here. So with that, and the fact that we have basically this low to this high, repeating this low projected up, but completing more specifically the premium arrays. In other words, reaching up to the objectives that we outlined or I outlined for this particular week. With that said, that moves me personally to the sideline or what would be considered a position of neutral. I'm no longer bullish. I'm no longer bearish. I'm in a wait and see mode where I don't want to basically risk anything for the rest of the week. I don't want to assume that I need to have another trade, another position. All those things are no longer important for this particular trading week. So the question is going to arise, do you have the discipline to stop trading when you hit your objectives, even though you have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday still left in the week? That is a pitfall for new traders, developing traders, or recently consistent and profitable traders, they get that bug and they think, well, you know, I got more time. Let me see if I can get here and make more money. And then the inevitable happens. You fall victim to trying to pursue more when the market has already communicated rather clearly that it is done enough for this particular week. Your objective is not to get in here and try to trade every single day as many times as you can in every possible setup. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're looking for low risk, high probability trades that are allowing you to cherry pick and not fall victim to fear of missing out or greed. All right, on the hourly chart, nice return back down in. Consequent encroachment between the imbalance premium and discount levels respectively. After hitting consequent encouragement, it trades back down, closes in the buy side of balance, sell side inefficiency, order block, and discount low of the imbalance. So hits it, then springboards up into the weekly objective I gave you, and then one more time ramming above it here. And again, the draw on liquidity on the 15 minute time frame being shown here. Midnight, New York time, consolidates, and then rallies. This in here, small run on sell side liquidity there. Then aggressive run during the 8.30 news event I mentioned last night's video. I said, take a look at your economic calendar for the dollar. And you can see the reaction here. And I said we would see this likely deliver on that news report. Okay, so... A lot of you may be looking for reasons to trust this stuff I'm teaching you because you get outside interference and people talking that have absolutely no, no idea what they're talking about and or uh, just failed traders, failed students that can't do it here, can't do it really with anyone. And that negativity will start drawing in on your personal development. And you'll start questioning, does this stuff really work? Can he really do it? And all it takes when you are not profitable and you're still developing, it takes very little effort to derail you. I know this intimately because it happened for me many times. It's important to remember where you are in your growth curve. You're really, really early on in your growth curve. So those tug of war, emotional, psychological impacts that you get from social media, other people, opinions, those things will easily weigh on you and wear you down because it's easy to quit. And if you're not mentally strong, quit because I'm not going to talk you into staying. That, that never happens, <laughs> okay? If you can't hack it here, 
if you can't accept, there's going to be periods where, even with my concepts, I have to sit still and wait for the market to give me more information. But when it does, you get this. Okay, uh, it's not ambiguous. It's not two sides of the marketplace and pick one that works after it happens. These things are going to be questions and barriers for you on an independent basis when you basically decide you no longer need my assistance and you're going to be looking at the market without having any reference to what I see coming in the commentaries. So the commentaries are me lending that experience to you so you can see where you should be focusing. Where should your focus be using the tools that you've learned in this mentorship? And if you can't do that, if you can't bring yourself to the level of discipline that requires that, I cannot teach you because you are proving yourself unteachable. So I'm just putting it out there okay, so you can see what's up. All right, the euro dollar daily chart, nice breakdown in here, working deeper below that premium level here once we trade it through it now it becomes a premium level uh, again if we get continuation on the dollar euro could eventually trade here i'm not suggesting that's going to happen in a day or two i'm just saying just because we've broken down i just want to show you once more where it may be drawing to but it may take time to get down there it's already extended a lot in here and dollar in my opinion has met its objective on the near term at least for this trading week Unless something develops, you know, obviously tomorrow or Thursday, I'm content to sit on my hands the rest of the week. That means I'm not trying to predict anything. You see how liberating that is? It removes that I got to perform. I got to know. I have to be engaged. I have to find a trade. I have to find a setup. No, I don't. Being still, doing nothing is a position. It's profitable, always. If you look at that and see a move that takes place and you view sitting still, not engaging, not taking a trade and missing that move as a losing position, your perspective is upside down because you're assuming that you would have been right on that trade when you don't know if you would have been. That's the benefit of studying in hindsight. You have the experience in a pseudo capacity versus looking at something that's already moved and then lying to yourself and saying, I could have made this much money on that and not at least acknowledging the likelihood that you may not have won on that market. You may have been stopped out or you may have simply been wrong and it may not have delivered that. So you're, it's easy to look at something and say, oh, I would have made this much money on that. That's so easy right now. I can do this and I can do that. And that, again, is a pitfall. It makes you think, just like I tell you, when you look at other people out there pretending to be able to do things, to be able to call moves, be able to engage, like I'm showing you on YouTube. Again, all the displays and executions are public. You have the details behind the scenes. They just get to watch the magic trick. And here, you get the details behind what sleight of hand and wizardry that I use out of the mentorship content to make those trades come to fruition. Well, we're holding with a longer term bearish stance on Euro, but for right now, I'm content with the rest of the week. I'm not trying to forecast anything. We might wanna come back up inside of this sell sign and balance of outside deficiency and study that as that may be what we end up seeing going into Wednesday and Thursday. But again, it's still bearish in my eye. All right, euro dollar hourly chart. Again, refer back to yesterday. Breaking down, come back up into the sell side of balance by side efficiency. Trades up to that, bearish order block. Nice displacement, another fair value gap here comes in to that level there and the discount low of the imbalance respects that, fills it in as well on this gap, and then breaks lower. Beautiful. Actually, I'm go back up on this something. We have a small little institutional order flow entry drill right in here. All right. 
actually move back one more time. <laughs> so why is this institutional order flow integral? This over here, this tail, we treat that as a gap. Now, that gap would be the same thing if we were looking at something like this. Okay, so that gap with the uh, wick or tail coupled with this over here, that becomes what? A balanced price range. And then we have that little run above that short term high here. The algorithm will remember that and then drop lower, not completely filling in the gap. So institutional order flow entry drill there. I'll come back to this. We're not done teaching on all these examples, okay? Uh, these PD arrays, there's a lot more detail around them that I have to flesh out for you, but I'm waiting until everyone becomes charter. Okay, once that becomes the lay of the land in here and no one's in the payment process anymore, everybody's in their respective small group of 10, then I'll start teaching it. And then those things, when they get leaked, you're gone. And since no one else is coming back in, that's going to be a painful decision because there is no chance of getting back in. So most of you are going into month 11 payment. So there's not much longer to go for most of you. And then you'll all be charter members. And then we're a community. And the only thing that happens then is we dwindle because of abuse, leakers, or sellers. You're at a 15 minute time frame. Midnight here. Just a straight drifting lower. Small little gap in here. Beautiful delivery. Look at the bodies in there. See that? Beautiful. Beautiful. Optimal trade entry here. Retail sales number, 8.30 in the morning. Breaks lower. Low, relative equal low. Sell side liquidity. Attacks it deeper. Consequent encroachment. Here. Breaks lower. Running down equity. So you would take partials below that low. There. Pound dollar, we are looking at the daily chart here. Now I'm gonna use this pair to ring in the homework assignment that I gave you last night, which was to go into the Euro pound pair. But we'll get to that in a moment. So we had this breakdown, the market traded a little bit deeper into and above yesterday's high, into almost consequent encroachment of this tail on this candle, so essentially like right there. And I think it just fell short of it. Looks close to it, but it really just just by a little bit it fell short. But nonetheless, it was up there, and then we came up that high. Yesterday's video, I mentioned this imbalance in here. I mentioned that ultimately, you know, there was a setup in here that we could have used, and I would have used as a potential shorting opportunity. But we're going to ring in that euro pound and why it was important as a homework assignment. But then anyway, the market runs higher after filling in this small little gap here. Runs higher, breaks lower, small little fair value gap there, trades up optimal trade entry, and then breaks back down. So this pair is being heavily manipulated because of the control and expansion on the downside for euro pound. Euro is exceedingly weak, dollar is strong, cable is being held in consolidation, how do we know that? Euro pound. Euro pound is weak. So that means longs in cable are scalps. Shorts on cable are going to be struggling points. And I'll show you what that means when we go into the 15 minute time frame here. Here is yesterday's trading. And when we were trading right about there, that's what your 15 minute chart shows from last night's video. So we have this upside and bounce, buy side and efficiency here. The market trades up into that. I said, now, if this were live, if we were in a room and it was trading just like that, I would sell short with the expectation that this low and the sell side liquidity below that and a lower low over here would be my objectives if I was trading this pair, okay? It trades up into that. It delivers rather handsomely. Below this low, you could take a partial, but notice what happens here. If you look at this rejection block, which is the closing price on this down close candle, it's actually one pip at above 
that rejection block. So it never really hits it. And it doesn't really hit it there because this is slightly higher. So let's play devil's advocate, okay? Let's assume that I did take this trade or more importantly, say you took that trade. You saw this as something that would be a shorting opportunity and it does offer an opportunity to go short. But you're a trader that refuses to take partials. It's gonna be all or nothing because you learn from Twitter traders that partials are stupid, partials are foolish. Your risk to reward ratio is stupidly managed because you're taking off profits, but you took on the initial maximum risk for your trade. That's an unprofitable trader talking. That's an unprofitable would-be teacher. That's somebody that has absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And everyone that learns from me that does that partial, that's usually the only reason why they're profitable, <laughs> okay? Because they want to hold on to the trade too long and either stop something out or it just never goes to what they're looking for and they just can't stand the trade and they get out. But long story short, let's assume all of us were selling short here and you didn't take partials here and you had your limit order to get out below this low. You get this, it comes back up in. Okay, this is reasonable. Consequent encouragement, that's reasonable. Let's see if it drops down. It starts to drop down. You feel good about yourself. You feel good about the trade and then denied. Runs to a stop somewhere. Okay, it could be above here because you managed it from there to here or you rolled it to here because we took out the rejection block. That's reasonable. But then you're stopped out and you probably either have a very small win or you get stopped out with your stop being hit there and again, a small loss. Either one of those things are insignificant. The thing that's going to hurt the most is the pride and the pain and uncertainty about why didn't this pan out? This is where the benefit of Euro pound homework kicks in. But we'll come back to this when we get to the Euro pound. The market rallies above the short term high. There's a shift in market structure. When you understand Euro pound is weaker, this is likely to run here. Shift in market structure, bullish. Fair value gap, bullish order box. Trades back down into it after midnight and then rams it higher. Pumps it up into that. Then we have a small little fair value gap. Breaks down. Shifts in market structure now bearish. Rallies back up into fair value gap. Discount low. Breaks down heavy and then consolidates into the close. Now let's take a look at Euro Pound. Here's Euro Pound. Small little imbalance in here. Mean threshold, up close candle, trades into that. There's your premium array. Consolidation, rallies, accumulation, smart money reversal, low risk sell, distribution, and then in here, another level of redistribution, and then the accelerated sell off. That's a market maker sell model. On a four hour, you start to see it a little bit better and start to flush it out a little bit more. Below here is the original consolidation and sell side liquidity. Accumulation, reaccumulation, smart money reversal, low risk sell with the rejection block, distribution, redistribution. Remember what I taught? The second level of redistribution on a market maker sell model is the holy grail. That's the thing, that's the silver bullet I talked about on this weekend's video. That's the thing that you should be looking for that repeats every week, every day, and it will not stop. Once your eye is able to see that, once you see that, it gives you everything you're looking for. Now, you still are prone to screw it up because you're human, just like I have done, okay? There are people that will look at this stuff and think, okay, I'm never gonna make a mistake because it's so good. But then when you use it and you do something wrong with it, you're at a crossroads. You're at that point where, okay, how am I to deal with this in a responsible manner? Obviously, I am prone to being human. So are you. That means the logic should always go back to the concepts are not flawed. The teachings are not flawed. You executed improperly. 
so you own it. That is a bitter pill that's wrapped in barbed wire that nobody really wants to swallow when they're developing. They don't want that because many of you, especially in the 21 group, you see things like we've been doing the last couple of days and you like these lessons and it's delivering in the marketplace and it's like, man, this is, this is it. He's, he's lit now. He's dialed in. He can see everything. It's easy to feel good during these times. But then when we get in those little ruts and we're about to get into one because the holidays, because technically this is the last week I trade. Oh, that's not what you want to hear, is it? But that's what I teach. I teach the week prior to Thanksgiving in the U.S. That usually ends my trading year. I didn't make that up right now. I didn't just come up with it in 2021. I've always stated that. I've said it on YouTube back in 2010, 11, 12, all the way till you know where we are now. I say it every year. It doesn't mean I'm not going to obviously deliver commentary on what I think it's going to do. I'm just saying I personally would not be engaging because I elect to use these weeks to be a family man, holidays, focusing on that. So those are the reasons why I do it. And I talked about this also in my video series on YouTube. But with all that said, when you know that second level of redistribution, when it's in a market maker cell model, and you see it in a cross like this. Now, this is important. I'm not writing on the screen. You have to write this in, this, in your journal. Dollars bullish. We've called it bullish. Foreign currency bearish. Euro, clearly bearish. Cable, we looked at a scenario that could have potentially been a idea that you or I could have just went in there, walked in as a human being, said, hey, you know, this is a likely scenario. Let me take a short here. And it doesn't deliver like you would have expected it. The way I teach how it should run for that liquidity below the lows. But it denies it. It doesn't go down there and then rams the other direction. How do you deal with that? How do you contend with that? Well, you go into the euro pound and you say, okay, we're in a trending market now. Dollar's going higher. Euro's going lower. Cable should be going lower. But you go into the cross to double check that you're on the right pair. If you're bearish foreign currency, you want to know which one is the weaker between euro and cable or pound. In this pair, the first name in the currency's title is euro. So when this currency goes up, that means euro is stronger and cable is weaker. When this pair goes down, that means euro is weaker and pound is stronger and vice versa. Over here, if we are seeing a second level of distribution, and we're at a premium right here, and it's likely to go below here, this is when the accelerated selling or magnitude on the downside increases to a larger delivery of larger big candles or ranges. So you get speed and distance. Remember those comments I used to always add in my video? I'm waiting, I'm looking for speed and distance. That's why that signature is expected here because it's on that second level of distribution in a market maker cell model. This means what? Going back to the title of the currency, Euro should really be falling easy, but cable is either going to go sideways or run by side. Comparing the Euro dollar to top, I said we would go over that area in here for your homework. Here's Euro going up into that small little fair value gap here, there, and I said it should stay heavy and roll right over that day. And we got it last night in the commentary. I covered that. Euro pound, look what's going on here. We have this high, higher high. High, lower high. Then we'll go back to that checklist. Dollar bullish, foreign currency bearish. Okay, you go into the cross to find out which one you want to be in to get the, the outperformer, okay? No one's the, the sicker sister, the one that's more likely to go down than the other, which would be Euro in this case, because 
euro pound is diverging with the euro dollar. So this is indicating that, yes, this is just a stop run. Yes, underlying pinnings of the marketplace suggest that euro will outperform on the downside. And if that's the case and we're bullish on dollar, we have fared it out that cable is not the best candidate to do what? Sell short. So now, if you look at the relationships here, cable's going higher. This is going lower. So this higher and this higher, you don't see any divergence from an S&T standpoint. It's hidden from you. But when you use the crosses correctly with the underlying narrative of the marketplace, bullish dollar, trending environments, then you go back to the cross and you look for the weaker sister or the stronger sister in the pair euro pound. So you're going to try to find the the most, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you're looking for the one that's going to move the most, basically, and have the most dynamic price action. And that's what you get here. Okay, So it helps you ferret out which one's going to move the best. So that's answering a question I got many times over the last couple months. How do I use the cross to find the, the better trade to get in if I'm looking at euro and pound? You have to understand what you're looking for. And that's all based on present narrative because you've been learning for the last few months that dollar's been in consolidation. So dollar being in consolidation, that means you go to the cross to do what? Find out which one's going to move and dollar stays consolidated, but the crosses will be used to trade. But we don't trade euro pound. But you would do it with like Aussie yen and you use the, uh, the interest rate differentials for that. So this is how you work with the crosses in the Forex market, but you do it properly. There's a reason why you look at crosses for certain things, and it's never the case when you look at people that beat the market maker, you know, Astro Effects, everybody else, you know, they think, they think they know what they're talking about when it comes to dealing with these crosses. But because they don't understand that the algorithm itself is utilizing this information, because they don't even believe there's an algorithm. They don't believe in IPTA. Everybody outside this mentorship thinks it's all made up. Well, that's, that's their ignorance, and I'm welcome to leave them there. But when you understand what you're looking for, and <laughs> when it happens most of the time, it isn't always going to happen for you because, again, go back to that analogy. Well, it's not an analogy. It's a reality. We're all human. We're going to be prone to doing it wrong or reading it wrong. But... There's rules that I teach you in here. They do not change. I'm not moving goalposts. I'm not, you know, mystifying and hypnotizing you so you forget about something I said over here and now it's something new. You're just learning more intimately how to use this information. So it helps you navigate and pick the better setups that deliver the better trades. All right, NASDAQ 100. I talked about this imbalance in here, how we traded up into that. Be mindful of it, but I didn't think we were going to stop there. It just a means for us to come back down and retrace. Dig right back down into this mean threshold of bullish order block. We hit that and immediate rebalance. You see that? We open, trade down into this old high. So all of this here rebalanced and then came off that, closed here. Today we opened, trade down a little bit and then sprung higher, completely overriding this premium array in here. So the focus is here, okay? Hourly chart on NASDAQ 100. Again, going back over here, we saw the reaction, it rallies up. I mentioned in yesterday's video that we were likely to draw back into the opening gap. We see that here, trade it back down, offer a little bit of resistance in here, trade lower, and then lower low here, ahead of the news event that came out in the New York session and the opening of the stock market. So this low had sell side below it. And we have this wick split that in half. Boom. Remember we cut through candles, we're not supply and demand. We we don't lean on supply and demand retail logic. But this run on the sell side here, we're gonna take a look at that when we compare the averages. 
but it rallies above. And remember what I said about this opening gap. I am bullish on NASDAQ, but I'm waiting for it to trade above that gap. And if it comes back down into that gap, I would be a buyer there and then try to you know, make a move going higher. I outlined it. I explained to you why I felt that way. I told you what would be the structure and setup and framework of a long trade in this particular market. Okay. I am at my core a futures trader. I many times when I speak to you is as long as you all have been learning from me, even before I started the mentorship, you all see me as a Forex trader guru. Okay. Many times you hear me talk and you'll hear me say things that link back to my early 90s as a futures trader. I'll say contracts. <laughs> there are no contracts when you're trading Forex. Okay. Um, the idea of being a one trick pony or learning from a one trick pony is nonsense because the futures market is something that would give me very little opposition if I had to go right back to it. And I mentioned as we got into September and such that we would start talking about these indices because this is the time when they're hot. It means that they move around a lot. The liquidity is really good. The ranges are really good. The setup and framework is just, it's brilliant. But I don't like them in the summertime. I don't like them at the very beginning of the year either. So there's times when these markets are good and when they're not, I don't want to talk about them. Not because I want to starve you as my student, because I know some of you want to be specialists in these markets. I'm teaching you how I interpret price. I want you to be operating when the highest probability and odds are in your favor. Not, well, we have time. Let's just trade this market now. I don't want you thinking that way. None of you should have that, well, I'm just going to settle for this right now. <laughs> okay. I don't want you doing that. But I'm also teaching you when the Forex market is stale and the currencies are just not moving around that much, you are not locked in to... Well, I can't do anything because Forex isn't working for me. Indices offer this opportunity. And you can obviously trade you know, small mini contracts and micro contracts of these indices as a futures market. With reputable brokers, they, they offer it. Okay, The CME is made it ve a very, very accessible to small account traders. But even with that, some of you that don't have that much money probably aren't going to be in that realm yet. So I'm teaching you to be a complete comprehensive analyst so that way you will know when and how to navigate from one asset class to the next when it's most appropriate for you. But go into your notes and if you have to go watch the videos again. But I explained how if we get above that gap, the opening gap and come back down in, I would be wanting to be a buyer. But not just simply on the basis of that, I have to have other things. What other things? I'm not going to bring in something new here. It's the things I've been teaching you. But take a look at it now. Here we have short term low. We drop down. This is your Judas swing. This is the AM session. We drop down. Rally. We come back down into that gap. See that? You watch in my YouTube channel, I buy it. I am not trying to teach what you are learning in here. Now, I had the lines on here, and I'm quite certain that the majority of the folks that are looking at that, they're thinking, well, you know, what, what's these lines? <laughs> you know what it is. But I wanted to, just as we got into that level here, I just wanted to be a buyer and then weather the storm of this here. So I felt that that 16,200 level wouldn't need to be traded to and also it's basically a breaker okay so this level here extending out in time i felt that we'd find some support there it went into a little bit and if i would have got stopped out it's fine i would have went right back in again and i would have used half the leverage and still would have showed what you saw today well i would like to believe that okay i don't want to talk in such absolutes but the the ego in me <laughs> knows that I can find setups in these markets. So 
market goes back down one more time, takes up the short term low here, and then nice rally up. And if you watch in the recording, I map out when it's up here on the lower time frame. This is a five. This is a 15 minute time frame. I didn't use the 15 minute time frame to get in, but we we drop down in. Before it drops down in, I draw a little trend line that has a little arrow on it. I say, okay, when it's up here, before it does it, while it's printing and marking to market live in the recording, obviously, it drops down and I draw the arrow to this level here. And then underneath that level, because I'm trying to show you in our conversations now, inside that gap, it's going to go from there up to 16310. That was my level, 16310 for the morning session. That's what I was outlining. It did exactly, with the exception of one more pass down in here, that's fine. Didn't stop me out, but it went exactly like I wanted to. And we only had this candle go just a little bit above it. And that's what I'm mad about. <laughs> I'm mad about that because I'm usually out on the highest candle of the morning session or the lowest low on the morning session in the indices. But this is enough to show, obviously, again, for everybody out there that's doubting, okay, oh, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. Man, you all see it. You see what is likely to happen. The world sees me performing with no real idea why I did it. And that's why a lot of people hate my videos, even in YouTube, because I'm not outlining everything that you see here. They're not, I'm not obligated to them people. Okay, I teach and show what I think is useful because if you look at things over and over and over again in my YouTube videos, you'll start picking out things. And that's why I try to hide entries, I kind of like skew where I want to get in at, where in my opinion, it's what I'm doing, but it may not be something you would agree with. That's surreptitious. That's evil. That's hiding something. Why is it evil and why is it? something that would be frowned upon by this community. I'm obligated to you. I'm not obligated to them. And if I was teaching every level of capacity that I do in this mentorship on YouTube, then you would be right to be offended. If I was teaching everything I've been teaching in 2021 on that YouTube channel, you should be upset, but I don't do that. So if you're looking at this move here and you have wrote down everything I said before it happened. This is exactly what I teach you. This is exactly what I outlined. And this is what you get as a result. I cannot trade retail. I cannot look at things with indicators. I cannot look at trend lines, moving averages, all that stuff. It's offensive to me. Because once you understand what the markets are doing, what they're really doing, and how they book, and how they mark to market, and why they're doing it, because it's not buying and selling pressure. That's not what this is. They're absolutely controlled. They're algorithmically manipulated. There's no way I could know these storylines before they happen unless that's the, the truth. And I have inside information about why they do what they do. There's no argument there, folks. That's why I said, you know, get these people out. Oh, yeah, you know, he's doing something illegal. He's doing this and he's doing that. Folks, listen. I can do this in front of any governing body. I have no problem. You all are witnesses to it. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't afraid of none of that stuff. But when you yourself, when you get to this level, and this is not even that high of a level. I mean, this is something that I think personally, 18 months will get you. If you've done everything I said and how to train yourself and practice, 18 months, this type of trade and idea and fleshing it out and seeing it before it happens, that is absolutely reasonable, it's realistic, and it should be a goal. The problem will be that New York lunch, you might hold on to it too long in there. Or you'll try to take trades in there. Or you'll try to trade on the other side of the uh, New York lunch after you've made money and then you'll lose some or all of it. 
and then take a loss for the day. That sucks. That's why I wanted to work early in the morning when I was a, in a, a future trader, trading S&P and bonds. I wanted to make my money early in the day. And then I practiced in the afternoon. The majority of the time, my losses that hurt me the most were the ones I took after New York lunch. And if I just would have stopped for the day and just took what I made in the morning and been done with it two or three times a week and never went back in again, I would have done way better. But like most of you and everybody else in trading, when you're first coming up, man, that feels really good when you're making $1,500 in the morning. You know, it feels great. Like, where can you do that in 1993? I didn't know anybody back then that was doing that. That's a lot of money. And to do it in sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes less than an hour, and that's it, you're done. It makes you feel like, well, I'm, this is, I didn't work hard enough for this. Let me get in here and overtrade. <laughs> you know what that feels like. You've done it. And that, that's some of the things I did when I was a developing futures trader. And it hurt. And those things still hurt me. So that's why I don't do the reckless stuff that I did back then because I had those scars that do not have numbness. They have pain in them still. And that's why I teach the way I teach. I speak the way I speak because I live these things. I've lived through them. I have all the war scars and traumatic stress <laughs> syndrome. It's, it, it's real. I went through all that stuff. But it makes me who I am. And it gives me the genuine reality, gripping, grab you by the lapels and listen to me. Because if you don't, you're going to have the same pain. And you might not have the obsessive compulsive disorder that I have that said, the hell with you. I don't care how much pain this is going to be. I don't care how many times I blow an account out. I'm going to keep on doing this until I learn how to do it. It's easy, as I mentioned earlier in this video, it's easy for a developing student to quit. And if you're a quitter at heart, quit. Quit. But if you know in your heart that you want to do this, there isn't anything out there, come hell or high water, not something I'll teach or won't teach, something that somebody else does or doesn't do to you, how many times you lose, how many times you blow an account, if it's something that simply says, this is just being delayed, this is not a barrier or complete denial, it's just a speed bump. If you have that mentality, you can be a trader because trading is managing a career of professional loss. And it doesn't make sense to anyone because they think it's all about winning all the time and very little losing. But every trade you get into is a losing trade. You got to overcome the cost. If it's Forex, you got the spread. If it's futures, you have the commission. Every trade opens up with a loss. Every single one of them. Not one trader opens up a trade and they're a winner immediately soon to get in there. You have to overcome the cost. And then... Add to it, you have to be timing it so you don't have anything to draw down before it hits your stop or margin you out if you're not using a stop and you're over leveraging. But you have to have the resolve mentally, psychologically, emotionally, 150%. I am not quitting. Now, you can quit me, you can quit this community, you can quit this whole idea the way I teach. If this doesn't fit you, go do something else. But whatever you do, if you're going to be a trader, you still have to have that resolve that no matter what, I'm not going to stop. And maybe you'll find something else. I just personally think everything else is stupid. Everything else is guesswork. Everything else is gambling. And it's flawed logic. <laughs> it's based on garbage. Have you ever seen anyone teach 
futures like I'm showing you here. There's a lot of futures traders out there and there's a lot of futures index traders out there. There's a lot of gurus, educators that say they can do this and say they can do that. But have you ever seen anybody outline a narrative before it even happens and it delivers like this? Because I don't. And I look for them. There's no black box version guys out there that can do that. There's no explore traders turn YouTube teachers. There are some out there. They can't do this. Look for it. You want gonna find it. So when I take my examples out to YouTube and I thumb my nose at the people that sit on the sidelines and they they say, I do it for fun, but a part of me does it to encourage you all here that may have doubts. Because it's easy to forget where you're at when you get disoriented with garbage from people that are toxic. That's why social media is something that you should not be in. It is a drain emotionally, psychologically, emotionally gets you pissed off. Oh, and it does what? It makes you show your colors. Mike, if you're listening, when I mentioned that on the thread, which I took down, I don't want people that are frauds titled in my form. I don't believe Tom Dante, okay, is a profitable trader. I don't believe anybody on Twitter is worth listening to. And I don't want my forum to become baby pips. But before I took the thread down, I commented on you because you thought I was giving you an insult when I told you you run along good tell time I said he wasn't profitable and I said be careful you're showing your colors I was being facetious because by doing something like that you're showing your colors like a team so I don't want any of you feeling like you have to show your colors I, there is no team ICT I am my own team and I'm more than capable you are your own team okay you're an army of one and when you have that mental fortitude that you don't give a shit what anybody else thinks, what they believe or don't believe, when you can do what you're learning here, does it really matter? Do you really care how many people are all around the world think that you can't when you're doing it every day in and day out? It's a joke that you get to laugh at all the time. But the weak-minded individuals, some of you young men in here, you wanna be able to get this skill so you can go out there and smash their skulls over and over and over again. And that's what I did on America Online. And that makes you toxic. It makes you arrogant, because when you start doing it and you get the feedback like a gladiator. Remember the movie with uh, Russell Crowe? He's out there, you know, he don't want to do that stuff, but he realizes he can't get out of the situation, so he might as well just make a spectacle out of everything. Trains the other barbarians to work with him as a team, and they just run roughshod on everybody. And then all of a sudden, he's like, yeah, yeah. And they're feeding off the crowd's energy. Well, that's fun when you're doing it, but it starts to warp you. And then you become thirsty for that kind of stuff. And you get ugly as a person. And you start bragging about yourself and you start elevating yourself and your flesh becomes even more of a impulsive monster. And then you start doing things that you aren't really able to do. And then when you can't do that, it weighs heavily on you. Then what do you do to make yourself feel strong? To entertain yourself and those people that you're trying to impress. Then you have anxiety attacks. Then you have depression. Then you're looking for other ways to make yourself feel empowered. Instead of just thinking, what was I doing before I did all this stuff? Trading. Let me tell you, I've done that before. And while I felt it was fun most of the time, it's more fun walking through a grocery store walking through a crowd of people and then look at me having no idea who I am, what I'm able to do, 
how much money I can earn, all those things. And I can live way, 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 way more than I'd live now. Like I could do a lot more. I could spend a whole lot more money. I could live more lavish than I do. But to me, to be a gray man, blending in, not standing out, to me, it's entertaining. I like talking to people. And when they ask me, what do I do? I'm an entrepreneur. I don't need to tell them what I'm doing. And that's intriguing to them, but it diffuses the whole opportunity that would rise up for me to say, yeah, I can go in the marketplace and do this and do that. Because invariably when I say things like that, they're like, hey, can you help me out with, and then all of a sudden you gotta be either rude or give time that you really don't have to a stranger or someone you just met. And you know, it's, it's, it's draining. It's very draining. So I don't know why I'm even bringing that up. <laughs> I just toss it out there for no extra charge, but none, nonetheless, the point is this, you, you've heard me outline this move. It's not Forex. Okay. So the question is the algorithms that run Forex, are they the same in the futures market? Not exactly, but a lot of the logic is similar. But there are certain characteristics that are in futures markets that aren't in Forex. And this is one of them, the opening gap on the beginning of the week. You use it like this. Okay. Um, there are gaps in Forex when we open up to, and it's similar to this, but you have to bring in that New York lunch and be mindful. That's the, like, that's the period of time where you don't want to be doing anything. But then again, the, the market resumes and starts moving on the other side of that in the afternoon. We'll teach more about that. And obviously when you get into the index portion or commodity trading uh, lessons, and I don't recall exactly what month it is on top of my head, but uh, I cover some things about you know Forex versus futures and index trading. All right, and finally, last slide here. The bond markets over here, this is the futures five year, 10 year, and 30 year. Take a look at this high here, and then this high here. See how we're lower there? And then this high here, there, and there. So the blue number represents this one here. This is the 30 year treasury. Okay, it failed to make a higher high there, where the five year and 10 year went higher. So we have a triad divergence here on the three bond markets that we like to track. And this is bearish. And we saw the market break down hard on bonds. Now think about what that does. If the bond markets are going down, okay, if they're going down, there's going to be an impulse for the market to go higher in equities. Because if they're not willing to buy the bond, the money's pouring out of bonds, the interest rate's going higher to entice new buyers, but then that makes it bullish for equities. So that's that tug of war that goes on. There are times when the bonds and equities move together. That is something that is always like that roulette table analogy I use. It's not always the case where is either bet on red or bet on black and you got a 50-50 chance. No, you don't because you have green that can pop up. Just like the green in Forex is what? The cross, euro pound. It ain't, okay, dollar's bullish, so I can sell short euro and I can sell short pound and there it is, it's easy. No, because you can get leveled by not resorting to a study of the euro pound cross because that's the green on that roulette table. What's the roulette table green in index trading? The bond market's in sympathy with equities. If they're moving in tandem, be careful. Be very, very careful. You may have a technical setup that may not be as pristine as you think it is, and then you'll get tagged. So you wanna wait when these marketplaces create these obvious disparities between the bond market tanking and this just dropping down into an imbalanced bullish breaker rallies. And then, as I mentioned yesterday, I thought that we were bullish. And then I look over here at all the spawn information, 
also in balance, low, lower low on the NASDAQ 100. The Dow, which is US 30 here, notice that we're seeing this lower low here on NASDAQ. We don't see it on the Dow. We don't see it on the S&P. So what does that mean for this low here? This is a run on stops. What kind of stops? Sell side. Okay, so sell stops are taken out here. Trades back down into this imbalance for consequent encroachment. Boom. What should you expect to see in price? Upside. It runs, takes out buy side, comes back down into the breaker, and then back into that opening gap. And that's all occurring in here. And then off the races we go. So this was all the internals behind the scene that I would never go over there on YouTube and teach. But these are the, the underpinnings, okay? The things below the surface that makes the trades high probability. If you don't have these things behind the trade, you're probably not trading a trade that's set up as a high probability trade for index trading. Now, obviously, when I do things like this, it makes it look really, really easy because you have the benefit of looking at it over my shoulder. You watched me execute. I'm showing you what I was looking at and seeing, but don't let this give you a false impression of, well, oh, I know how to do this. I'm going to go to do it. You have to study it. You have to look at it. Many examples in hindsight, study, go into your, your well, if you're going to be trading index, you want to look for these signatures in your setups and you will train yourself to see this. Even though you see this, I guarantee you, 85% of you would have never recognized it if we were looking at it live. You would have not noticed that because you would have been looking for something else that you have, again, like I mentioned over the weekend, you had this thing, or maybe it's a list of things that are huge in your mind. Like these are the things I have to figure out. These are the enigmas. <laughs> these are the puzzles I have to figure out. And ICT keeps bringing up new stuff or talking these long videos and I just want him to answer this and make it easy for me for this. When I told you the secret this weekend was just to get past that, write down your questions about it, which is what I told you before you even enrolled. And it will work itself out. It will resolve that confusion and uncertainty because of this supportive lessons that you're denying yourself access to and attention of that are all around you in this mentorship. I promise you. The things that you're choking on right now, I have already answered that somewhere in commentaries or videos, but you are hung up on it because it's a lot of content. And I do lessons like this where I'm forcing my perspective on the current market environment, which is problematic in some ways because when people come in and they see those old lessons, they think, well, they're stale and they're old. Well, they're, the logic behind it is not stale and old. It's the same logic I use all the time. But unless you familiarize yourself with those things and those concepts, you can't digest these things. This is kind of like meat and potatoes. When you first come in, it's soft foods, real soft foods. And you, know, you don't have the teeth behind you to bite down on something that's meaty like this one. This type of trading requires a whole lot of understanding. You just can't just say, okay, uh, I'm going to teach you how to do this in three days. I'm going to teach you to do it in a week, three months, six months, and forget it. It won't work because you have to build and ingrain an understanding about seeing these things repeating because you just can't take one example. Like I could write a book and have 50 examples of this. It's not the same as you going into your charts and seeing it, finding it, and marketing it up in your journal and then having your experience framed on your own digging into the chart with backtesting. That's what makes it real for you. This is entertainment for most of you. You come in here, you watch me do this. Oh man, that's so cool. Wish I could do that. You can, but you have to do the things I tell you to do to learn how to do it and trust yourself and the interpretation of price. If you don't condition yourself and train yourself properly, you are deferring your success. I'm not deferring it. I'm not holding any of you back. You all were successful, potentially, at YouTube. You came here to learn the inside, deeper secrets. I'm showing them. And you came in on your first leg here month one. That right there puts you in the ground running, making money. If you learn month one and you understood what you were exposed to in YouTube, there's absolutely zero reason why any of you can't be profitable. 
And that's to God's honest truth. That's straight up, absolute, rubber meets the road. That's the truth. That month one content literally makes profitability within reach. It's the brass tacks of the very things that you need to know to understand what frames a setup. If you understand those things, you can be profitable. You'll lose a lot of trades, but you can be profitable if you apply sound money management. And then from that, I build on more things and add more clay and add more clay. And I sculpt and sculpt and each one of these commentaries like this one here and the one on this weekend, which I got a lot of feedback and I appreciate everyone that said it was a good one. This is mentoring. I'm adding more clay to your skeleton. When you came in here, you're just bones. And I'm adding more clay and more clay and sculpting and cutting stuff off. I give you information. Out of that information or that new clay, you cling to what is yours. Not everybody's going to use a breaker. Not everybody's going to trade institutional order flow entry drills. And then as I shave off by teaching and giving you options about what it is that you want to use for your framework and model, the clay that I cut off by commentaries, and you start thinking, well, yeah, I don't need that. I like this. This makes sense to me. I resonate with that. This one doesn't make much sense to me. It doesn't mean it's flawed. It just means it doesn't resonate with you. So that gets shaved off. As a sculptor takes that clay off, that's what I'm dealing with you. Some of you want to hold on to the clay that I put on you. All of it. And you want to understand all of it. And it's a mess. You won't show your beauty as a, you know, a final masterpiece that you become as a trader. You won't be refined. You'll just be this globulous mess of, I have a lot of information, but don't ask me to be profitable. I'm not organized. I don't have a model written out that's very detailed about what it is I'm doing. And then once you have that detailed model in paper, reducing it down to a couple of choices that fits on the back of a business card. All of my models, I can reduce it down to that because I understand the underlying logic. But if you're trying to make a trading plan fit on the back of a business card and you have everything that you've ever been introduced to in my arsenal and library, it would never be done. You can't get it all on that back of that business card. You can't get it in a you can't get it in one journal. <laughs> Think about it. Think about how many journals you have. Okay, how many how many notebooks you got? That's a lot of information and that's wisdom. And being able to refer and pull on that information when it's needed, that is experience and wisdom and skill meeting. 